Okay, so mobile tech is in a really weird but exciting place just because plenty of innovation is happening, but just not really where I think everyone was expecting it to happen. And when you look at the market trends, the iPhone hasn't really been doing all that well in sales just because there hasn't been enough innovation to warrant a purchase every single year. Meanwhile, the iPad Pro has just become a dark horse and it's swooped in. And with the announcement of iPad OS and how that's really going to revolutionize the way this thing is used, I've seen a lot of debate about the usability of the iPad because I see a lot of people dismiss the iPad all the time on Reddit and Twitter talking about how, oh, it's useless or oh, you can't really use it for anything, it's trash. That's wrong, but I think the reason that that's the perception is just because we haven't really seen the iPad used for a lot of different things outside of just casual things. And I think that people sometimes miss that this is just a really nice, accessible, and powerful piece of tech that allows you to really get tactile functionality and really get your hands on with what you're making. Digital art, you're talking music production, you're talking video editing and 4K video editing. These are all things that are doable. So I wanted to dive in here and go into some apps and projects that provide a variety of unique use cases where this thing has really been like a Swiss army knife when it comes to creativity and show why you should consider using the iPad Pro in your creative process this year. So the first app that I'm going into is Art Studio Pro. And Art Studio Pro is an app that allows you to create digital art on the iPhone and iPad. What I really love about this app is just that it's a happy medium between photo manipulation and digital art. And I noticed that with digital art apps, it can be kind of overwhelming because there's so many. And a lot of them tend to skew towards different areas and fields within digital art. So you'll have some that are really great for painting, some that are really great for photo manipulation and stuff like that. But Art Studio Pro is such a great blend of those two because it helps me uh, have everything in one place. And if you're familiar with Photoshop, it's gonna look familiar to you. There are great brushes. You can import your own brushes and create custom ones as well. And I use this thing to create a lot of iPhone edits to graphic design work as well. Fan art too. I also like to use this app to do concept art for personal projects as well. It's stable, it's powerful, and you can work with really high quality stuff. If you like using Photoshop too, and you wanna edit in Photoshop, you can export a project from Art Studio as a PSD and work with it in Photoshop. But that being said, RCA Pro has been great for creating my digital art in a speedy fashion. And also I can get really detailed, as detailed as I'd like, without getting intimidated by the features. And there are other apps too, like Procreate, Superimpose X, and there's also going to be Photoshop for iPad later this year. I I'm not sure when the release date is, but I am a tester for that program. Wish I could say something, but I don't get to say anything. I know they are working diligently on that, so definitely keep your eye out for that. Next up is Beatmaker 3, and this is the comprehensive music production suite for iPad. I've said it before, I've talked about this app like ad nauseum, so I don't want to oversell it. Something that really stands out to me is just the fact that I have really nice performance pads in this program. These these make it great for hands-on creation and also the way timeline and pattern editing are structured. That makes it easy for me to end up with complete projects, which is something that I struggle with in other apps sometimes. Being motivated to finish it through that really great design that Intua has nailed so well with that app is something that's really been instrumental in just how useful I found it to be. There's also Scene View, which will allow you to turn your song or your project into different patterns and you'll have a pattern view. This will allow you to kind of DJ and stuff like that with your different projects. You can also use MIDI controllers. I'm having to like reach around here, but like I use my launch pad for most of the projects that I do, especially I like to do beat videos on Instagram and stuff like that. And so uh, this thing is crucial in that process for me because maybe the glass isn't doing it a certain day and then I can just plug the MIDI controller in using the camera connection kit that I have, then I can go to town. At the end of the day, it's like only two things that I need and it's nice to also be able to touch the interface on the screen in Beatmaker 3 if I need to change something. I get really frustrated with the laptop. Sometimes my brain's moving faster than the laptop is and I find that that gap is smaller when I'm working directly with a touch screen. Something else that I like about Beatmaker 3 is that I can use other apps as plugins. So for example, Audio Kit Synth 1, which is free, so you should definitely check it out, it's amazing. It's this really great open source synth. I can add that as a plugin to a bank of Beatmaker 3 and now I can use that app with Beatmaker 3 acting as the brain to host the app and sample directly. The audio mixer in Beatmaker 3 is really great too because it's really intuitive and I can just easily adjust different parameters. So it's really nice to mix tracks in this program as well. And there are other apps that are great for that sort of thing too, like Aria, which is great for mastering. And the different plugins that you can use for mastering are 
pro level plugins. I like to use the fab filter plugins and those are plugins that you can use on the computer. So that's pretty crazy. The funny thing is like they're cheaper because it's on mobile, even though that same plugin on the desktop is way more expensive and it's the same thing. Then there are other apps as well, like Nano Studio 2 and similar ones that are great. But if you're really into hands-on production with a heavy focus on beat making and performance, you really can't go wrong with Beatmaker 3. Next up are Video Leap and LumaFusion, which I often use simultaneously, so I'm kind of going to have to talk about these at the same time. We're going to start with Video Leap, which is great for video layering on iOS, and you can use this on iPhone and iPad. Video layering, we are talking about blending and stacking layers of videos. This is stuff that you would need a computer for. And last year I made a video about video layering on iPhone where I talked about Fused, but honestly, Video Leap is just a better version of that. Video Leap is regularly updated, a little confusing at first. It definitely Definitely takes some getting used to, but once you're used to it, it is the go-to app for making video edits, so to speak. And you can layer videos with various blending modes. With the free version of Video Leap, you can layer up to three videos. And you can do more if you upgrade or buy the pro subscription slash version. It's a little confusing and they can be kind of expensive too. You can still basically use 80% of the main features anyway without that. And I noticed that when it comes to free versions of apps, you usually aren't gonna be allowed to export in the highest quality. And Video Leap does not do that. They let you export in 4K whether you have the pro subscription or not. And I do think that it's worth the money for what you're getting if you choose to go that route because you're essentially getting the ability to blend your video layers and effects. That's really useful if you're on mobile and you're trying to do this stuff on the go and this is just a really nice option for people if you also don't have a computer. And this is something that I talk about a lot. Not everyone has After Effects. Not everyone has these programs that cost way more. This is a great option if you're trying to get your foot in the door with video layering. Two of the biggest advantages Video Leap gives you is you can mask individual layers. So if there's a part of a video that I want to erase, I can just easily erase it. And you can also create keyframes, which will allow you to create automations for your video project. So for example, if I want to slowly adjust the opacity of my project and I tap somewhere to set it to zero opacity and then I want it to slowly fade in and then become 100% opacity at this portion of the timeline I can create those automations and then you can watch that gradually happen. Keyframing with editing and animation is something that you do a lot when it comes to computer-based video editing workflows. So this is a great learning tool if you're not used to doing that and also if you are used to doing that you can apply that know-how and you can really make the most of what you get in this program. So Video Leap is great for blending videos, but you can't really create effects within the app. You're going to need to pull things into it to blend. So my pipeline is basically me just going in and creating a bunch of different effects from scratch and other applications, and then bringing those into Video Leap, and then I can blend it with my desired background. This was my process actually for creating that short film that I shared a couple of months ago, where I shot it all on iPhone 6s and 4K, and then I added all the effects here in Video Leap. So all of those different scenes were put together in Video Leap, and then I pulled all of my finished reels into LumaFusion, where I cut the entire thing together. LumaFusion is easily like the best video editing tool on iPhone and iPad, and it really gives you professional editing tools because like, I mean, you can edit giant high-res files in the program. And this is not stuff that you can normally do iMovie really was the only option for a long time, and this really just makes it, this just makes it look really shallow. I mean, you have so many different options, but rather than being negative, I want to be constructive. I want to go into why LumaFusion is awesome. First example is actually the video you're watching right now, and the last video were edited entirely in LumaFusion, and I feel like that's a pretty good testament because I could have made the same thing on the computer, and it wouldn't have looked any different. It wouldn't have been any different, and it runs so smoothly. I've only had a couple of instances where it's been kind of finicky. I don't really know what was going on. So Funny story on that front. A few weeks ago, I was actually editing this video and I ran into some bugs in LumaFusion and I couldn't shake them. So I noticed that there was actually an update available and I figured why not update it to maybe fix the bugs because they started to get worse. And then the minute I updated it, the app kept crashing every time I opened it and I could never get into it. It got so bad and I had so many projects that I needed to do that I tried to manually back up from the Files app and then I deleted and reinstalled LumaFusion and I could not open my project so I had lost all of the stuff that I was doing including this current edit. So I had to completely re-edit this video that you're seeing now and while I still have the original assets and things I lost my entire project file for the short film because I hadn't backed it up yet because I hadn't really needed to. 
I'm sharing this with you because I was just talking about how awesome and how stable the app runs, even though I was talking about an older version which ended up getting really uh, unstable and it ended up having a lot of issues. Also, let my experience serve as a reminder to always back up your stuff, even if you're using mobile apps, which usually run without issues. Prepare for issues to arise. Prepare for things to go wrong because they usually will and it's never gonna be when you expect it to be. So whenever you're prepared, you can adequately respond to those issues when they arise. And I also wanted to make a huge addition too because since I was making that video like three and a half weeks ago they've recently released the newest version of LumaFusion which is LumaFusion 2.0 and this is a huge update because they completely redesigned the interface and they've made it even snappier and they fixed all of those bugs that I was talking about. In the old version, you could have up to three video tracks on the timeline, but now you can have up to six video tracks on the timeline and six audio tracks. So they've doubled the amount of material that you can have on the timeline, and the performance is the same. Like, I was running into no issues. If anything, it's more stable. I don't know how they were able to do that, but they've really refined the app, and it gets me really excited because it means that now there's even more you can do with the app. So I'm not trying to flame LumaFusion or anything because I'm actually really happy with what they've done with the recent update. But that being said, I wanted to be completely transparent and honest about my experience and how it hasn't been as rosy as it had been. I still love the program. It is the go-to video editing app, way better than anything that's on the iPad right now. But other than that, it's really stable. Normally on the computer, I have to wait for render previews and stuff like that, and that can be kind of annoying. LumaFusion, I don't have to worry about any of that. And you can also keyframe in LumaFusion as well. If I want to add automations to various video clips or also to text and things like that, that's really easy to do here. The color grading in this app is really great, and I also like to create my own LUTs and import them into LumaFusion, which is awesome because I actually create the LUTs on the iPad here using Affinity Photo. And then what I'll do is I'll bring those into LumaFusion, and then I can really get the videos to look how I want them to look. There's a lot of high level video editing that you can accomplish here, but it's also really easy to get familiar with if you're new to video editing because the interface is so well crafted. I'm trying to not get super nerdy because I don't want to lose you, but at the same time, we kind of have to talk about video optimization, especially when it comes to desktop editing applications. Applications like Premiere Pro, this is an application that's having to facilitate the ability to edit all kinds of videos. With the increased scale of features, it means that this is a lot of stuff that the app is having to maintain all at once. It can be hit or miss depending on what your hardware specs are and depending on what kind of project you're doing. A lot of people recommend that you use Final Cut instead because it creates what you call proxies, which are essentially like fake versions of the video and then it will encode and render the real thing when you're done. This is nice. I just personally really dislike Final Cut's interface. I say all that to say that when it comes to editing, LumaFusion definitely follows after Apple in the sense that editing is really nice and snappy and the videos are optimized well and I can just breeze through clips and not have to RAM preview anything. But I also have the ability to really have a flexible project the way I do in Premiere. So it's the best of both worlds, but also on mobile. So naturally, I'm gonna feel at home there personally. LumaFusion doesn't really get in my way, and I really appreciate that. The biggest problem and downside with mobile editing is you don't have the luxury of just dragging files in and importing without exporting and compressing. What I mean by that is, if I'm just importing videos into LumaFusion, I don't have to export twice, but if I have reels from VideoLeap, I'm gonna have to export them out of VideoLeap into LumaFusion. You still are running into compression, and if you're really obsessive about that kind of thing, that's really gonna bug you. And that's something that for me is a bit of a downside, but I can deal with it because I'm shooting in 4K. You're not gonna see a ton of quality loss, but still, I am very interested in the potential of iPad OS because maybe that could give us the ability to drag the files from an app without having to export and compress and bring that into separate apps. And then we can have the flexibility that you would get on the desktop. So hopefully in the near future, we can see something like that exist on the iOS platform. Given the just large amount of potential that will come with something like iPadOS, I don't think it's unlikely. I do think that we will probably see that in the future. So hoping that sooner than later. I hope that this was helpful for you if you're considering using the iPad at all in your creative process, or if you believed that it's not useful in the creative process, don't sleep on this. There is a lot you can do and I'm not even using the current gen iPad Pro and I'm still able to do a ton. It's only going to get better and mobile is the future. This is something I've said for a while. Sometimes it's not always practical to have to lug around the laptop or have to only make a video when you're at the desktop workstation. Sometimes it's nice to just be able to just make something where you're at. There's a lot you can do with iPad Pro but more than that it's just nice 
to do stuff with the iPad Pro. It makes it fun to create stuff, which can sometimes be a deal breaker depending on what I'm using. If I'm always having to fight the software or if I'm always having to deal with poorly designed interfaces, I can check out and then I'm the one that kind of ultimately has to pay that price because then I don't make anything so I can just focus on making the thing and not have to worry about any hiccups and I want to come back. That definitely has been, I think, the difference for me when it comes to creating on mobile. So if you're thinking about grabbing the iPad Pro and using it in your process, I highly recommend it because this is the thing I use the most day to day in my creative process. Definitely we'll be diving deeper into the individual apps and talking through the different ways that I use them. So definitely stick around for that. And yeah, I guess that's it for now. So thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.